All you have to do is follow three simple rules. One, never underestimate your opponent. Expect the unexpected. Two, take it outside. Never start anything inside the bar unless it's absolutely necessary. And three, be nice. Be nice, bad way. Just be nice. Yeah, it, it sounds real simple in practice, but when you are at a bar, and I think the guy is right, when you're getting called a sea sucker, <laughs> it's hard to be nice. Someone's trying to punch you in the face? Yeah. Just be nice. It takes more than a montage to get over being called those types of names. <laughs> well, welcome back to The Last Row. My name's Drew, and I am here with my very good friend, Bad Way. Pain don't hurt. <laughs> we want to welcome all new listeners. For those that don't know, this is the podcast where we watch movies that might not have been loved by the critics and find silver linings. If you're looking for us on the web, you can find us at thelastrowpodcast.com. Follow us on Twitter at the Last Row Pod, Facebook.com slash the Last Row Pod. We're also on Google Plus, and we have a voicemail line, 415 779 LAST. That's 415 779 5278. And lastly, head on out to iTunes if you enjoy our show. Give us a five star review. Just want to thank everybody that's done that so far. Um, really appreciate you guys going out there. We've gotten a lot of great feedback so far. So uh, today we're doing Roadhouse. And actually, I'm a little excited. Because it's our first R-rated movie. Just Drew. a little excited? It's our first R-rated movie. I mean, I'm getting a little pumped here. <laughs> I guess I haven't really realized yeah. that because we've done some kids' movies yeah. and some PG-13. Since Christmas got in the way, you know, now we're, now we're getting down to some business here. Th- this is getting serious right yeah. now. Yeah. <laughs> it's getting real. Rated R. Um, Rotten Tomatoes, 40%, which is ridiculous because this is such a good movie. Uh, oh, wait, this is so underrated. I couldn't believe that it was 40%. Yeah. I mean, I it's, one of those, it. it's one of those so bad it's good cult classic type movies, but really, I mean, how could you not be entertained by this movie? You gotta be a curmudgeon, I swear. <laughs> anyway, uh, quick plots breakdown. Uh, Double Deuce is the meanest, loudest, and rowdiest bar south of the Mason-Dixon line, and Dalton has been hired to clean it up. Dalton. Pat- Dalton. What a great name. Patrick Swayze as Dalton. Uh, he may not look like much, but the PhD-educated bouncer proves he's more than capable Busting the heads of troublemakers and turning the roadhouse into a jumping hotspot. <laughs> but Dalton's romance with the gorgeous Dr. Clay puts him in the bad side of a cutthroat local big shot, Brad Wesley. Would you call her gorgeous? Yeah, she's weird hot. I'm not feeling her. Yeah, she's she's got too much of a tan going on. And by the way, whoever wrote this up, when we pull these, where do you, where do you pull these up I from? I just get it from Google. Google. He's not a bouncer, Drew. No. He's a cooler. He's a cooler. He's There's a cooler. A big difference. There's a huge difference. There's a big difference. The he, cooler is like the final boss of bouncers. Yes, he oversees everything. He tells them how to do their job. He doesn't have the shirt that says security on it. He blends in with so the crowd. Do you agree that Brad Wesley is a cutthroat local big shot? Oh, he's definitely a local big shot. Cutthroat? Yes. Yes. <laughs> definitely. <laughs> That's a, that's a hard yes. So so what are your initial thoughts about this film? I, I know that you and I watched this uh, together the other day, but when yeah. did you first see this? Uh, it was actually a couple of years ago. Was it the first time we watched it together? Yeah, actually, uh, we, we shared an apartment, and uh, you were just watching something randomly on Cinemax, yeah. and I was like on my laptop, and I kept looking up because I kept hearing these ridiculous lines. I was like, what are you watching? He's like, <laughs> you're like, I don't know, this movie Roadhouse, Patrick Swayze. And then we were hooked. Yeah, you know, and, and to be honest, I never saw this before until that moment. Yeah. That was the first time I saw it, too. I I always thought, in a, you know, this brings me back to the line from 40-Year-Old Virgin, but I always thought that, you know, Swayze was kind of a Streisand. Yeah. But he's really rocking the shit in this one. The famous Paul Rudd, yeah. And I feel like that's absolutely true for this. It's true, yeah. I don't know how this escaped either one of us. Like, one of us should have said to the other, hey, man, have you seen Roadhouse? No, I can't believe you ever seen Roadhouse. But we both have never seen Roadhouse until that moment. And now watching it again um, the other day, even better. Well, especially, better. especially with all the movies that we've watched, I know that we always talk on this show about how we grew up watching action movies and, and watching films like that, but this one definitely is at the top of my list, and to see that it got a 40%, that just, it makes me shed a single tear. Right. Because I feel like that's such an underappreciation well, for that, how good this movie is. That's why we do this show, because critics don't know Jack. What do you think of this movie as an 80s movie? Like, as classified as an 80s movie compared to other 80s action flicks? Well... Uh, The one thing that you can come back to is you can look at some of the bigger names from the 80s. Um, You can look at the Stallones, the Schwarzeneggers. This fits more to me on on the, the sidelines of Seagal. Yeah. It's more of a gotta bring down the rich man type thing. Tough guy. Doesn't really look like a jacked badass per se yeah he I mean, looks more like an unassuming guy right i mean yeah you think of swayze you think of dirty dancing you, maybe you got pigeonholed 
But uh, I was looking at his IMDb, and he does have some action flicks before and after Roadhouse, so he has been doing it. I just haven't been following Swayze's career previously or even currently, so, well, obviously he's dead now, but, I mean, I just, I didn't know what he was all about, Swayze. I thought he was yeah. dirty dancing. R.I.P. Patrick yeah. Swayze. Right. The one thing that I thought was pretty funny was the the stereotypical 80s tough guy, I'm going to say one line, and then I'm going to stare at you for a good two seconds. Yeah. And the camera focuses on a character for a very long time, I feel. In yeah. That. Did you notice that too? See, that happens a lot. It was. Like you say soap opera. That's a very good description of a soap opera. I was also thinking of um, just now the Lethal Weapon series. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They kind of did that too. I mean, they had the weird, like a little background music while they were having a conversation. Yeah. They'd say something and then they do the stare and then the pause. It's kind of awkward. This movie was full of that. It it, w- it was definitely was because I'm thinking about certain moments like when they're sitting in the office and they're saying tough guy stuff to each other. Yeah. The guy pulls that machete out of his shoe or whatever yeah. the hell it was. It was like the biggest knife I'd ever seen concealed. Yeah, you know <laughs> how that didn't get yeah, confiscated you, you on his way that. in. I don't know, <laughs> but you know, to me that that movie was it was just crazy and it fit yeah. with all the rest of those. I right, feel. and um, so the part of the reason why this movie is probably rated forty percent, which is why this is on our list. Yeah. A lot of terrible acting this movie, all the way around. It's Everyone's pre- guilty. It's pretty bad. But I want to ask you, who's the worst of the worst? If I had a pick, I think I would go with the doctor. See, I'll give you the rundown. We got the doctor, we got Swayze himself, Dalton, we got um, Wade Garrett, we have uh, Wesley, the, the, the main the boss. Guy, yeah. We have Jimmy, the main boss's sidekick. Who, who, you say the doctor? I say the doctor only because I feel that and we'll get to it. I don't think she fit right in the role. And maybe that's unfair to say. I just didn't think she was casted properly. And I thought they had no chemistry. Casting at all. aside, she wasn't very good, was she? No, she Not didn't at all. She didn't have good chemistry with Swayze. No. I felt like they could have picked a lot of other actresses yeah. at this time. There was a lot of great actresses. And I, well, she, you said she was in Cocktail with Tom Cruise, right? Yeah, she was. Yeah. So I don't know what her role was. I don't I, know either. Yeah. I can't remember. I was just looking at IMDb. She, she was in a lot of crappy movies. Yeah. And she's had a long career, but I, I don't. But I don't really not recognize her for that much, many, that many things. But it's just her and Swayze just didn't seem like they were they were in it together, you know? Yeah, they they had a couple of scenes that we'll get to later. Yeah. Um, one particularly on a roof. Yeah, one um, particularly a, sexy scene across from the, the rich guy's <laughs> lawn, with yeah. where he's sitting there creepily with the telescope watching. Um, but but we'll get to that. But I would agree. I mean, also uh, I would say the odor of, yeah. of the double deuce who he was uh, bad who hired Dalton. He was bad. He was terrible. But yeah, the doctor takes the cake. And so I would say I would agree with you. The doc is she's at the top away. of my list. Yeah. But I think the owner of the double deuce yeah. is a, a, a very See, close second. He was he was good at making those awkward say something and stare at the guy scenes. And then two seconds awkward. later, he'd smirk. Yes. That weird smile. Yeah, that's he, he made it. Extra, he was extra creepy at that kind of led hand in hand to his horrible acting. So speaking of the double deuce. Yeah. That's the main setting of, of this this movie. Yes, the hole-in-the-wall right? bar, right? It's in Jasper, Missouri. And um, as you see in the beginning of the film, you notice that that he shows up to, to Dalton's current place of work yeah. and says that he has elaborate plans for a place. He kind of came into money. Now, yeah. we were talking about a little bit about this. Yeah. What kind of situation did he come into yeah. money How did, did he win the lotto? Did his grandmother die? Did his great-aunt Beatrice <laughs> die? Like... <laughs> He I'm, had that smirk, man. It looked a little ominous. It looked does, a little sinister. Does he have a little real estate deal? Like like one uh, Brad Wesley? What if he was working with Wesley? Like I, I know that we said this before, but it looks it looks in this movie that he would be, at the end, the guy that thought that he was everybody's friend. Everyone thought he was the friend. He's yeah. kind of like the next leader in charge. He looks like he's going to set up shop as the next Wesley. Yeah. He's got that ominous, uh, right. mysterious look about him. Yeah, the, the main bad guy, Wesley, he said like, hey, I brought the mall here, right? Does he a silent partner? Was I think the he owner was. a silent partner in that ball deal. And the maybe seven eleven. Well, how did how did Wesley get in on all the little details that were happening? What if he really was kind of on his payroll? Yeah, but he was kind of undercover, right? Because Wesley, he had to have been an outsider. He's got to be Definitely. from another place. He said he was from Chicago. Yeah, I think he had to have the inside track. Like who's telling him? Hey, come come down here to Jasper. We need help. I, you it's, know. That place is a dump, though. Can we talk about it? He he said that, oh, it used to be a nice little place. It used to be this great joint, and now it's the place where, you know, I don't know if he says you, like, leave in a body bag or whatever the <laughs> heck he said. How many how many murders were committed at this place? Oh, like, man. The fight that happened just in the beginning of the movie when, when you know, Swayze winds up getting there and he's observing while yeah. he's drinking his black coffee. 
he's watching this thing and i mean it looked like a brutal a brutal fight there well let me let's know what's also funny about that which i noticed is that it was like run of the, it was like it was like every other day nobody was paying attention to the fight like in the bar like they were like oh they're fighting over there let's they were just listening to the music yeah it's like so that's how common it is it's like there's fights usually when there's a fight you gather around you watch then yeah. you break it up like oh fight something fight, fight. yeah they were just people on the other side of the room were just minding their own business they, it's like it's every day with business that. as usual yeah. if you will I like how they had chicken wire around the stage so that Jeff Healy band, which <laughs> yeah. is awesome band, by the way, greatest house band of all time. Oh, yeah. Like greatest band of all time for a house band. Um, I love how they had chicken wire and like the chicken wire was around the stage so that people were like, oh, you suck. And they're throwing stuff. They don't suck at all. No. They're a great band. Yeah, they were so good. They were too good for that, that establishment. I, I want to know what kind of deal that owner worked to get the Jeff Healy band, yeah. you know, whatever. I forgot the guy's actual name in the movie. It's not Jeff Healy, but that we'll call him Healy. Cause Healy, it's okay. easy to remember, but how they, how did they secure that contract? Were they on like a contract to be playing this? Yeah. I mean, okay, they must be the house band. And so the guy's blind, right? So yeah. how did, how did he get blind? That's is, why they put the chicken wire. Is that up. why they put the chicken wire up to get hit with a bottle? <laughs> he got hit with a bottle in the face. I mean, I, and no disrespect to Jeff Healy, yeah. he's actually blind. He was blind in real life yeah. because of some other health problem. But I feel that the character it yeah. fits perfectly right. with the character. So that was one of the best parts of the movie to me was this house music. They were I would I would go to the Double Deuce fight or no, I would go to listen to that band. Yeah, and I'll tell you, guilty pleasure of mine. I mean, not that it's bad music or anything, or I'm embarrassed to say it. But when we were putting the notes together for this to get in the mindset, yeah, I was listening to you Jeff Healy. Pumped up to Jeff yeah. Healy. <laughs> I had Jeff Healy yeah. band on disco- the discography yeah. on shuffle. I was listening to all the Roadhouse songs. This has a great soundtrack. Can we say that? It has oh, yeah. a great it's soundtrack. It's fabulous. It fits perfectly for, for whatever Jasper, Missouri would be in my head. Not that it's a real place. I, maybe it is. I didn't look it up on maps. The double deuce? Yeah. It's real to me, damn it. It's, it's real. It's, I like how the, the slow transformation of this place as Swayze starts to clean it up little by little, like the chicken yeah. wire comes down, yep. then they have a couple neon signs the, up. The, the drywall's up. Yeah. It's they, freshly they, spackled, what, like what it was getting ready. What was the... Uh, the, uh, what was the thing in the in the beginning when the owner was like writing over the graffiti? It said like for a good f or something. Yeah, for yeah. And uh, I forgot what call call Bill or call something Bill. that he that he changed it. He the wrote it to something typical else. Typical bathroom graffiti. Yep, totally. But it wasn't in the bathroom. There It was on the wall yep. of the actual the kind of bar. place this was. But little by little, yeah. Spackle it up a little. See, and there was no montage either. See, this movie's missing a montage. Yeah, you know, and and people complain about montages. But when there is no montage, you kind of wish there was. Yeah, you don't know how much time has passed. With a montage, you get it. Like, okay, maybe it's a couple months. That yeah, like he's changed, training. And that changed. I, I agree with you. I, I think that the, it's missing a montage. Yeah. Um, but I like the Jeff Healy band. I thought that was great to have that in the, the double deuce. And I thought it made kind of the movie. Um, but the main star of the show. Oh. Swayze. Swayze. Dalton. Swayze. Swayze. I did not know how much of a badass Swayze was until I saw this movie. Like I always, like I said in the beginning, I always thought that he was a Streisand. I thought, I think of Ghost. I never really yeah. saw him because we're, I'm at the age where I didn't really see those movies. Yeah, I remember um, arguing with my sister way back when I was young. I hated Patrick Swayze. Yeah, I've never, he's the I've never seen a movie of his. I just hated him because of Ghost. Because he's because <laughs> it was a romantic movie. Like I was like a little kid. I was like, ew, Patrick Swayze, ew, yeah, Dirty Dancing, ew. You want to watch a Swayze movie? And then his 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 name is very easy to make fun of. Oh, Swayze. It's, it's it flows. It yeah. flows off the tongue. Ooh, you like Swayze? You could say it in a stupid voice like that. You know, <laughs> is that how you said it to your yeah, sister? Yeah, Swayze. <laughs> <laughs> but I I agree though. I think that at the time. I had no idea that he was this badass yeah. that does yoga on a lawn. Kicks like so much ass. Tai Chi. Tai Chi. Ripping people's throats out. <laughs> I mean. <laughs> Multiple throat ripper. Yeah. And an alleged throat ripper too. Allegedly. Until from, it actually happens. Yeah. But he has a degree. What is it? A degree in philosophy? Philosophy. He's like a PhD. He's a philosophizer, Drew. A, so, I mean, maybe that's why he came up with the rules, I guess. Oh, the be rules nice. of, oh, of yeah. the road. Because. He, you have to get into the mind of your enemy, Drew. I like how he only drinks black coffee. And the other thing that I noticed this entire movie, I'd say that there is more times that his jeans are unbuttoned oh, than they're actually buttoned. It's for the ladies. <laughs> his jeans are unbuttoned. It's the a little bit movie. of it's a little bit of mystery. On what if maybe he has to kick someone and the jeans slip down a little bit? You get a little crack or a little bush. It may be. It's, <laughs> it's like the wonder. It's the wonder. It is. And is this kind of one? Is this one of those things where? 
you know, I know that chick flicks now these days and, and, uh, you go watch a movie, they like the breakup, the breakup was a, was a, essentially a movie geared towards women, but it had a lot of male viewers because of Vince Vaughn. Right. Now that's a co- totally different genre. Right. But the, the idea of, okay, Swayze's in this movie, you know, the, like a lot of, uh, they're going to market it more towards women because it's like Swayze and we got to give them like the sexiness of it. But then guys are going to go, it, it kind of fits for everybody. Yeah. Everybody's happy because you know, it's the heartthrob, but then he's kicking everyone's ass. Yeah. Is that the marketing this, behind this? This movie had everything. It had the fights, the blood, the boobs, the booze, yeah. the, the boobs, band. The, I got to say this too. The boobs in this movie were totally gratuitous. Like the part oh. where they're going in the pool. Yeah. And she just undoes her top. I'm like, that's just boobs yeah, for the sake of And I'm not complaining. Yeah. It's just funny. Right. So you have that for the guys. Then for the girls, you got Swayze's gratuitous ass shot. Swayze's pants unbuttoned the whole time. Swayze with no shirt on 90% of the movie. Yeah. And the love story. Yeah. The Which, love story was was kind of weak, and it I think was. we'll get to that. Well, it has something to do with the actors. I so. like the line that they always say to him, I thought you'd be bigger. I thought you'd be bigger. And that's a recurring theme yeah. and line throughout this whole film, right? So the whole movie's got a chip on his shoulder. He's heard that his whole life. thought you'd be bigger. Everyone says it to him no matter where he goes. Yeah. And he, he he kind of smirks and says, I hear that everywhere. Even the blind guy told him that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I thought you'd be bigger and joked with him. <laughs> yeah. And he, he's approached to come clean up this place. The owner comes in and has this offer he can't refuse right. but he names his own price oh what's what, the price what does he say like five hundred dollars a night but five grand five up grand front? up front is so, this a raise for himself oh yeah he doesn't get out of bed for more than five grand so what's his original rate like did he slowly raise up yeah for at first it was 50 bucks a night right so let me do the math on this that's five grand straight up front right yeah then you got fifty dollars a night what if he works seven nights a 500 week? 500 a night. 500 a night. I'm sorry. 500 a night. 500. That's a lot of money. So that's what? $3,500 a week? Is he working every night? So, or does he just do Saturday, Sunday? Maybe Thursday, Thursday Friday, Friday, Saturday yeah. night. Yeah. Okay. Call it Thursday, Friday, Saturday night. So that's, we'll give him 1500 a night until the job's done. What if he just hangs around? What are you going to do? Kick his ass? I chose the, long, the wrong line of work, man. <laughs> I should have been a cooler. Should have been a cooler. I don't know. I, I th- I, people would be like, I thought you'd be bigger. I thought you'd be bigger. <laughs> you could surprise some people. What was his first job? Like, where where did he grow up? So the plate on the car is from New York, right? He's got yeah. this car that he drives to wherever he goes. It's like a nice Mercedes. But whenever he gets to wherever he's arriving at, yeah. He goes and buys a beater. Now, yeah, we were talking. There's so much mystery surrounding this character. Uh, correct me if I'm wrong. He didn't go to NYU for a philosophy, to be a philosophy major, and graduate just to be a bouncer. So something had to happen along I don't know. the way. Or was, was he was he a bouncer when he was like 16? He's paying for college. Yeah, he's a bouncer. And he just didn't get it. It was it, yeah. it was infuriating to him. Yeah. How can I do this better? Yeah. So I gotta become a. I gotta learn about these people. I gotta. I gotta outsmart all these he's, people. He's reading like Sun Tzu's. Manual I mean, that's a really war. roundabout and expensive way to become yeah. a cooler. Art of War. Reading yeah. that in his right. philosophy class. So he had to have different career aspirations before this. Something must have happened. I, I think that at at some point something must have happened that maybe a, a friend got injured and he knew I gotta I gotta do this better. Yeah. And maybe he was a hothead when he started. Yeah. And he he learned about the rules. Some guy named Wade Garrett taught him all the yeah. rules. See, we'll, he, we'll get to him yeah. too. He ran into Wade Garrett, and that's kind of what sealed his fate. So maybe it's kind of like a stripper. You know what a stripper strips her way through college? Yeah, it's like, I'm just doing a job. Yeah, and then she graduates college, but I can't leave this job. I'm Easy making money. too much money. Easy money. And he, you know, what if he was making 50 or or $100 a night, and he's thinking to himself, well, hey, I got this ripped body. I might I'm as well young. use it. I might as well use it, and then he gets sucked into the game, and he can't leave. Do you think that he loves it too much? Do you think that hairstyle ever come back? Oh, the the like the super mullet, the the solid snake mullet, oh. the big boss mullet. Uh, yes, Metal Gear. Solid Not only will mullet. it come back, it will come back within the next fifteen years. You think you're predicting it's it'll be close? Back? It's well, close to coming back. That's now. true because people have like the skunk haircut now. the yeah. the, the, the skunk faux hawk. Yeah, and and, and some and of the One Direction guys have like a, a, has had like a, a like an offspring of it. Yeah, it's coming. What about the skullet? You think that'll ever come back? The skullet was <laughs> never a popular style. It was it was out of necessity. The skullet is just what happens. It's the guy yeah. that can't give up yeah. the good hair. Yeah. It's like the comb over. Yeah. The skullet is the eighties version of a comb yeah. over. It's called keeping the party going. And sometimes <laughs> you gotta learn when to quit. You got you just gotta yeah. hang it up. Yeah. You gotta hang it up. Someone's just keeping it going. The other thing I wanted to ask you about Swayze in this movie is is there a guy like on set? You know how they have like assistant? 
yeah. was one of the assistant's jobs to go and get a spray bottle and just spray him with water yes. at all times. Oh, there's there's a Swayze spray guy. Especially during the scenes where he's shirtless. He just has glistening he's with glistening, sweat. Yeah. So yeah. So the, so the director yells, sweat! So that's <laughs> the, the cue of the sweat guy to get his little spritz bottle and go, pss, 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 pss. My favorite thing that he wore the entire movie was that karate gi shirt. Oh, it was like a shirt. That, yeah. What did you say to me when we were watching it? Like, you don't buy that. No. You earn it. You asked me where I buy it and you don't buy it. You earn it. <laughs> no one's ever bought a karate gi. You sure. earn it. It's like a shirt that yeah. is a karate gi. It like flaps open. And he had like jeans on. underneath yeah. it. it looked so weird. That looks like something that Seagal would yeah. wear in his personal life yeah. before he became like massively overweight yeah, and speaking of like we're a ridiculous thing of wearing jeans with your karate gi why is everyone wearing jeans in this movie when they're kicking people in the face <laughs> talk about the most uncomfortable yeah. clothes to be fighting in it's the worst pair of pants to wear during a, a kick fight there's a, i mean there's a lot more kicks than punches in this movie that's the, if, if you've never seen this movie that's the, you're, you're getting roundhouses yes yeah. well he he roundhouse kicked at least 10 times yes yeah. it shouldn't be called roadhouse it's called a roundhouse <laughs> that's the name that's that's the working title of the movie was the, roundhouse they roundhouse, changed it they to changed roadhouse it. <laughs> <laughs> that was that old show yeah. on nickelodeon back in the day i that's, like the one move um where the guy with the knife in his boot oh. walked in and you would think like the first move, like you sucker punch somebody. Yeah. He tried to sucker front roundhouse Patrick Swayze <laughs> with jeans on. Yeah. Now, if you walk into the bar knowing that's your sucker punch. Yeah. Put some sweatpants on, right? <laughs> I mean, that's the other thing. Swayze had sweatpants. Why didn't he just leave them on? Like he was trying to look cool. Yeah. In the beginning, he had those like 80s Miami Vice pants that were like so loose. Yeah. They looked like a, a curtain on, a, on oh, yeah. like a window. They were like really baggy pleated khakis. Yeah, almost. they had pleats, yeah. but the pleats were like ruffled. Yeah. It looked like a curtain on a window. But that's that's better than jeans. Yeah. Kick well, somebody's ass That's the thing. Pants. It's loose. Yeah. See, Seagal knows this, but, but Seagal wears jeans. Seagal wears movies. jeans too. <laughs> and like, did they have jeggings back in the day and, and like, we didn't know about yeah. it? And the pointy boots that are almost like heels yeah. for men. Yeah, right, right. And it's like, how are you fighting at these Seagal, things? The thing with Seagal was he was always wearing that puffy bomber jacket. <laughs> <laughs> he was. It, looked like, it looked like he had a fan blowing yeah. at him at all times yeah. and like the air was blowing into the jacket so let me let me ask you this was seagal like a like it was like was he consulted for this movie oh yeah i feel like he's jealous yeah. they didn't ask him to do it was he consulted was he consulted on the wardrobe so what would you wear in a bar fight? oh i gotta wear my jeans and my pointy boots and the gi shirt the gi shirt you gotta put a gi shirt somewhere but it, it, what was in the beginning he had like a mock turtleneck it was yeah. like a black mock turtleneck like, but he was done fighting at that point yeah. really because he was his job was he was done overseeing that first the crew yeah. yeah i love how the other transition was you know, when you first show up at this bar, it's a bunch of nobody like bouncers that are all dirty themselves and they're not wearing anything. But yeah. when the place is like an honorable establishment, yeah. they all have polo shirts. Yep. <laughs> the polo shirt with like the name on it. Yeah, like, the red shirts. Yeah. yeah. Double deuce. Yeah. The you, shirt. Have, you have to earn that shirt too. They you don't buy it. those shirts. You it's earn like them. they graduate to the yeah. uniforms. Right. They got the uniforms now. They're a legitimate establishment. <laughs> and the neon lights. That place looked like a freaking Chuck E. Cheese, yeah. man. I, I question I questioned the, the renovations. Which, again, leads to uh, the owner. I think his name is Jimmy, now that I'm thinking about it. Jimmy was the bad guy. Jimmy was the bad guy? Yeah, Jimmy was the no, main bad guy. I'm sorry, not Jimmy. Uh, whatever the, the... I forgot his name. The <laughs> owner of the Double Deuce. Yeah. We'll just call him the owner. The shady owner. So he came into this money. He wanted to renovate. He wanted to turn this into a chain restaurant. Yeah. So a year down the line, after Swayze leaves, he's trying to clean it up. They're going to be flipping burgers in this thing, aren't they? Oh, it looked like a burger joint. Endless it fries. It did. It looked like yeah. a Red Robin type yeah. thing or like a pizza like hut. Like a TGI Chuck Fridays, yeah. It did. It looked like a family restaurant looked very commercial. I don't like the direction that, that the Double Deuce is Spe- going Speaking in of through. 1989, this movie was made the same exact year as the last movie that we did, Ghostbusters 2. They couldn't yeah. be more different. They looked yeah. like they were filmed in, in another decade. Right. Didn't they? The Ghostbusters looked like, it looked like an 80s movie. Yeah. Or like, even like the 91, 92. Yeah. It's still kind of 80s style. Yeah. This thing... I don't know what year it was in. It it felt like early eighties to me, yeah. especially with just the the clothes. Yeah. But maybe like the such a rural town that uh-huh. maybe the style doesn't get there yet. It right. slowly evolves. I yeah, I feel like if you just put this movie on in front of me, I had no idea what it was. I would think it was made in the seventies. I really would have. Yeah, I you know making fun of Swayze's outfit and all the stuff and all the outfits. I just felt like. Swayze in the end of this movie looked like such a badass just I mean even just standing there he walks into the bar he's just hanging out at the bar that that girl's like throwing herself at him and he's just having yeah. none of it <laughs> like I, I just don't know he looks so damn cool you know and, I, and I'm not a Swayze guy like I just never really knew yeah how cool he was in this movie I'm gonna have to check out his, his back work 
Yeah, I mean, I need to go back and watch right. some of these other ones too. Right. But do you think that that karate gi? You think we can get that on the Golden Closet? Yes. Do you think they sell that on the I Golden would, Closet? I would damn well hope so. I'm gonna. I, we gotta get them on this show. Sometime. See, I'd rather have the sweatpants. Myself. This way, you want sweatpants? Yeah, I want the sweatpants. What, washed or unwashed? Yeah, just game used, <laughs> game worn, game worn sweatpants. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, I, I just, I think that karate gi would look great hanging on the wall here in, uh, in, in <laughs> Last Row Studios here. <laughs> we got to hang it on the wall next to the Vigo painting. I don't know. Everyone's fighting in jeans. They're, one of the things that uh, that Michelle said to us was um, when she was watching this movie with us. Um, Who was Michelle? Uh, the, my wife. The last wife? <laughs> the, la- the, last, the last wife. First and last <laughs> wife. Um, she said, like, during that main fight, yeah. why don't they just, why doesn't, uh, Swayze just throw the guy in the water yeah. so his jeans get too yeah, heavy. Throw, and he throw, can't throw kick. Boss Jimmy in the water so that he can't kick him anymore. And then he can't kick because they would be they would be so tight on your thighs <laughs> and they'd be so heavy. <laughs> he'd be so you, annoyed. He wouldn't be able to kick or do any of the martial arts moves that I'll, he had. I'll tell you what, if Swayze threw him in the river because they were fighting right near a body of water, yeah, the fight would have been over. He would have gotten his throat ripped because he would have quit. He yeah. would have said, "You got me this time, buddy." I can't fight in yeah, these he wet pants. He would have hopped pants. on his bike and left. Yeah, these wet jeans are just too much for me. Yeah. I can't stand up right now. I'm walking. I feel like yeah. I'm walking. In it would have been fight over, and Swayze would have known. Like, all right, I can't fight this guy. He's got wet jeans on. Well, let's talk about the doctor. Yeah, because you have strong opinions about her too. Tell, yeah. tell me what you think about the doctor. Well, this doctor, she couldn't be less of a doctor. You know, if you put if you put five people to light up and put a white jacket she on them, a white jacket she's on. the least likely to be a doctor. <laughs> she just she doesn't look like a doctor. Look, I'm not saying all blondes are dumb, dumb blondes, but she looks like a dumb blonde. Well, she like, looks like a valley girl. She ha- yeah, a valley girl. She has this spaced look on her yeah. face, and she's got this, they put huge glasses on her like that's gonna help, right? She can see better. Yeah, her hair's all done up with the doctor's thing on, and she's she, clearly flirting with her customer here. Yeah, the guy she's stapling up. Why so, did they use staples? Didn't, couldn't they use stitches? He stitched himself. She didn't, lear, she didn't learn stitches. <laughs> what did she say? She saw his stitch marks and she was impressed with them? Yeah. Oh, and like, they were his. He did it himself. Pain don't yeah. hurt. Pain don't so, hurt bad way. Yeah. So as we said earlier, they have no chemistry, these two. And they get into a little love, uh, a love situation here. I, I didn't really feel it. it wasn't, no. I wasn't feeling it. So they go out a couple times. Now this, uh, actually, the second time they go up to his place, which is above like a horse barn, <laughs> something That's, that, you know that he rents. All, all like horse shit smelling aside, yeah. I bet that was a sweet place. Yeah, it seemed the, pretty nice. That old farmer guy yeah. seemed like a nice landlord. You know what he say? Like a uh, hundred bucks, like every a, month or hundred bucks a month or yeah. whatever the heck it was. Sweet deal. That was a great deal. Yeah, it was above a barn, but it looked like a cool yeah. place. No cable, no phone though. He doesn't care. Smells of shit. It doesn't matter. <laughs> it's it's yeah. all right. So he, he takes her up to that sweet, sweet smelling uh, farmhouse. Nice that fragrance. He has. Yeah. And she's ready to go. Now we commented on this. Yeah. Like he, first of all, it's just clear she's not wearing a bra. Yeah. So he hikes her dress up a little bit when they start making out. No one knew her going on there. Yeah. She knew what she was getting into. Yeah. She was so, ready. So they start to make love against this rigid stone wall. And at first, she looks like she's not enjoying it. That looked like the most uncomfortable yeah. place of all time. You they would, had no chemistry. Yeah. You would, like, if you just walked in on the scene, it looks like a sexual assault, right? Yeah. Oh, it looked, it right. definitely But did. it's not. I mean, she's into it. She's consensual they both 100%. Like each other. Yeah. yeah. So, so, first of all, they're doing it in front of this horribly rigid wall. Like a fireplace yeah. with, like, really awkwardly placed stones. Yeah. And they're, like, and they're, you know, they're, they're making out. And the make out scene is, like, they almost, they're, like, you know when you put a negative and a negative uh, yeah. magnet, they're, they're kind of like they're pressing they're, away, they're pressing away from each other. Yeah. That's almost what it looked like. One of the two didn't want to have anything to do with the other. What if? So what if they had like a fight off off camera I think or something? They, yeah. Maybe they didn't like each other. Maybe they didn't like each other because it looked like they didn't want to kiss each other. Yeah. It was almost like a chore to kiss each other. It, it looked seemed. like they were having a hard time with. Yeah. Maybe being into each other. It was really obvious, and I thought it was awkward as shit. Well, sometimes they do that. You know, it's like oh he's not my kind of guy. Like she's a doctor. She's, you know, a very well off person. She's a very smart person. And he's this cooler from a bar. Like yeah. she kind of knows about his NYU degree. Maybe I should be doing this. Yeah. So maybe she's like trying to keep herself from maybe. really falling maybe for we're him. not giving her off credit for being into her character. And that was awkward though. Yeah. And then I love how, again, he's naked basically in every scene, which is yeah. hilarious. And then he's sitting out on the roof like on a rug. Yeah. He pulls the rug out so his ass doesn't get chafed on the on the shingles of yeah. the thing. <laughs> and he's he's sitting on the roof just staring off into Wesley's house across yeah. conveniently across from the lake. So again, Wesley is the major bad guy who's used, ripping off everyone in the town. He's getting rich yeah. off of everyone. And he used to date this girl. And he used to date the doctor. She left town. Yeah. So his mansion is across the street. He's having parties. This guy's like 60 years old, right? 
He's definitely old. Yeah, he's old, but he's like being this playboy. He's almost like a Hugh Hefner type. It's the money. Like he's having fun. He's got the money yeah. and the control and the power. Yeah. How did, how did they even come to date in the beginning? She seems like a nice person. Yeah. Like, did he did he basically bully her into dating him? Possibly. Like, it, like uh, Wesley's other girlfriend, this yeah. other blonde, like she's like beaten and she's got like a black eye. Obviously, she's abused. Yeah. Maybe this doctor, you know, she's a more educated woman. She doesn't take that kind of shit. Yeah, and, and yeah. she didn't look like she would because she no. is a smart, like, yeah. smart person. She's a doctor. This other person just looks like an idiot. Yeah, so maybe she was into older men. Yeah. He had money. Didn't she thought hurt. he was nice. Charlie thought he was nice. Maybe he smacked her one time and she was like, no, I'm, I, I'm not taking that. I just think they didn't have chemistry and, and, you know, we always talk about what worked, what didn't work. We don't even yeah. need to talk about it at the end because everything worked in this movie for me except for, except for the doctor. Yeah. And and it's not her fault. It just didn't fit right. I don't. Right. I don't think it was the right casting. Right. And again, it's just. I think it's her. Her being not up to par here, uh, amongst other bad actors. I thought it was obvious that she was not good. Yeah. Should we talk about his rules? <laughs> yeah. So Dalton goes to clean up the double deuce, right? So he's got these rules that we uh, we highlighted in the beginning of in the intro. There. Why don't you why don't you tell us the rules? So he's got rule number one: never underestimate your opponent. Pretty standard rule. Yeah. I don't I, underestimate him. I I get that. Because how do they know who can fight and who can't fight? I'll tell you fight? why. Because people underestimate him. Yeah. I thought you'd be bigger. Right, exactly. Yeah. So don't under- underestimate him. He, he knows firsthand. Don't underestimate me. I won't underestimate you. Take it outside. No fighting in the bar. In the beginning, Again. that was the funny when he was like, oh, I'll fight you. And he's like, oh, I've been looking for a reason to take you, Dalton. And then he's like, all right, outside. Yeah. He tricks him into tricks going him. outside and then he walks away. Be nice, yeah. See, he was, then he was being yeah, nice. Was Number three. Step three, be, be nice. nice. Yeah. Number four, the unwritten rule. The unwritten rule. What? Also, knee kicks. Knee kicks. Kick, <laughs> kick the biggest dude. Like, he, what did he say? It doesn't matter how big they are. If you kick them right in the knee, yep. they'll always fall hard. Yep. That's a great rule. That is a great rule. I got to start using that for myself. Yeah, knee kicks. Next time you're in a bar brawl. I'm just going to start kicking people in the knee. And number five, unwritten rule number two, <laughs> the head nod. The head nod. <laughs> so let me tell you about this head nod. So this is Swayze's, Dalton's, most common mode of communication between he and his bouncers. So a bouncer's having trouble with a customer. They look over at Dalton. What do I do? I know I'm supposed to be nice. I'm not supposed to hit this guy. What do I do? Swayze, head nods. Just a quick one, once down. Like a small one, right? A small nod. And the guy knows exactly what to do. It means be nice. Ask nicely. Ask again. Walk the guy outside. The guy's given more trouble. Maybe he threw a punch and the guy blocked it. Looks over at Swayze. What does Swayze tell him? Head nod. He doesn't say anything. He knows what to do. Ask for help from your other bouncer. Try to get a two-on-one to walk the guy out. The guy's punching him in the face. Now looks at Swayze. Swayze gives a third head nod. The head nod means, all right, you can hit him now. Hit him. Yeah. But they all look the same. How do you know which head nod means what? They built their own chemistry, I guess, right? after bartender See, bouncer yeah. training. If I were one of the bouncers and he gave me the first head nod, I would punch the guy in the face and Swayze be like, what'd you do that for? And he's like, you nodded me. You said I could go ahead. When he first showed up at the bar, what did he do? He fired the the one guy, uh, 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 not Mick Foley. What's his name? Um, uh, Terry Funk. Terry Funk. Yeah. yeah. Actor Terry Funk. Yeah. And being too hot-headed. He, he was like, I don't like how you react to people, because yeah. he went and basically started a brawl. He started yeah. the brawl, yeah, the opening brawl, and uh, that then he gave the rules. He threw, so. him, threw him on a table. Yeah, he, he did that, yeah. too. But where did he learn this stuff from? Oh, well, there's only one place you can learn it from. That's the best of the biz. The best in the biz. The best of the biz happens to be Wade Garrett. Wade Garrett. <laughs> so what's this guy's real name? Uh, Sam Elliott. Sam life. Elliott, that's right. He's like the guy from uh, Big Lebowski, all these other movies. He's yeah. in that movie, The Mask, about that guy with the weird face. Yeah, so this guy is like your classic. He looks like the Marlboro Man. He ta- I think he's the voice of a lot of that Western yeah. stuff. Yeah, so this guy is like the legend. Like, Dalton has his own legend. Like, everyone knows who Dalton is. They whisper, oh, that's the guy that ripped out a throat. I think that's the guy. He's the best in the business. He'll kick your ass. Wade Garrett is also has that kind of legend. He was the first. He was before Dalton. He was the man that was teaching Dalton how to kick knees before it was cool to kick knees. He is. He He's the guy, the original cooler. Yeah. But like, I want to know where he came from. What's his story? What's his back? We don't find out anything. Yeah. It reminds me of the movie. We watched um, The Equalizer recently. With Denzel. And one of the things I liked about The Equalizer is that they didn't really talk a lot about his backstory. You didn't really know anything. And yeah. I love it, but I also hate it because I want to I wanna know more. But at the same time, if you know more, then it takes the mystery away. Right. And the mystery is part of the best part. Right. He, he's, I think you said this to me, he's underused, he's in it too late, and he dies too early. Exactly, um, yeah. 
I mean, he's in and out. I mean, he's I think he's built there for for the the viewers to love and then feel bad when he dies so quickly. Yeah, he's spoiler alert. The the plot device <laughs> yeah. for you know, getting Swayze to go yeah. finally ballistic right. and go off the edge. So we're led to believe that this Wade Garrett character taught Dalton everything he knows. Uh, they have a history together. Right. Obviously, they um, they were teaming up somewhere along the line, possibly in Memphis. Multiple places, maybe. Yeah. And they're, they're, they're the best of friends, and they really respect each other. It's a, it's a teacher and, and student type of situation. Hey, mijo. <laughs> Calls it mijo, which mijo. is... <laughs> like buddy. Yeah, it's like a buddy. It's a term of endearment in Spanish. What did the the owner of the original bar said? Um, like when he showed up to the other place, wherever Swayze was, yeah, he was like, "Oh, I, I want the best." He's like, "Wade Garrett's the best." Yeah, Dalton has ultimate up the utmost respect, and he's like, "Wade Garrett's getting old." He didn't look that old. No, he looked the, like he had a little pepper, pepper, said, salt and pepper going. He's still the best. I I thought he was awesome. He was yeah. a, my favorite character in the movie. Way in it, way too little. Yeah. I feel, but he was great. So I I know we do this usually at the end of our episodes. We we try to like create. Create yeah. a sequel or change an ending or something like that. Let's just let's just get this out of the way right now because I think this is the this perfect, perfect opportunity. Timing. Let's let's just let's just make a prequel out of this damn thing. Well, that's the perfect yeah. thing because I want to know what the prequel is. Like, what happened? Yeah, How did these guys hook up? Where did they see, start being friends? So, in the prequel, we could have uh, Wade Garrett's character be the focal point, teaching this young student Dalton the the ropes. Yeah. Well, they're they're remaking, they're rebooting this, right? They are rebooting it, but instead of a straight up reboot, wouldn't a prequel be so much better? Because you don't have to worry about, oh, what happens next or right. rebooting it. Like, you can still be true to the original yeah. and talk about where did Wade and, and, and Swayze get, get together? How did they I, get? Yeah, I would prefer that. So who do you have? I, I have one guy in mind. Who's, who's, your, who's your Dalton? A Dalton? Oh, or you, you want to talk about I want to so, talk about Wade. So Garrett's the, the main character. Yeah. Who's your Garrett? I, there's only one I think man. I know. There's only one man that yeah. can be Garrett. In I think I know who it is. Wade Garrett, who got a little Southern twang to him. Oh. The only. You read my mind. Matthew McConaughey. That's, that's it. They, that's the only way. That's the only way this movie will work. And yeah. McConaughey's perfect for it because he's got that cool swag about him. And it's kind of like Sam Elliott. He's a little mysterious. Now, look at the Lincoln commercials. You know what I mean? Yeah, that's right. the perfect, that's the audition right there. Yeah. So He just says one line at a time, very existential. We don't like, need to weird. go any further than that. McConaughey. It's, it's McConaughey. They only make this movie if he's attached. So I'm thinking for Dalton, we got the Ryan brothers. Ryan's? Either Gibby, Gibby Reynolds. Yeah. Or or Gosling. I like Gosling a lot because I feel like he's that young face. He's like, younger. Br- like Certainly younger. Bright-eyed, like wide-eyed, like guy's going to learn. And we need to have our Dalton be in like his low to mid-20s, which I think yeah. I think Gosling can pull off better than Ryan Reynolds at this point. Yeah, Reynolds, Reynolds is almost too funny. Yeah. Like I'm thinking about Drive, yeah. like where we got Drive with Gosling. Yeah, like, I that's think true. Gosling pulled it off in Drive. What is it? Place Beyond the Pines. All these other movies that he's in. He's kind of... In those type of movies yeah. now. Gosling has a certain intensity that Ryan Reynolds doesn't have. What about Bradley Cooper? Cooper's a third one, but I also, I think it falls in the same category of Reynolds. Yeah. He's a little bit, his face is a little too goofy. Yeah. Like he's been in serious movies, I know, but I think Gosling's the way to go here. They could make it like a period piece, kind of like American Hustle, where they could go back and really like make it look like it was from the 70s. Well, or I don't know if you want to go disco route. <laughs> I think you want to go country route, yeah, cowboy but, route. But what was like a country bar or country place like in the 60s or 70s? Well, I think the cowboy style is just the cowboy style. Yeah, it's it never same. really changed. It never really changes. Maybe the jeans got a little tighter, a little looser, yeah. you know? The boot's a little pointier. I like how that guy had a knife in his boot, by the way. Oh, everyone's got a knife. It's like That's another like, thing about this movie. <laughs> left shoe. <laughs> Everyone has a knife. One was attached to the boot. Yeah. But everybody's got a knife to pull out. They don't conceal knives. They're the big, biggest yeah. knives ever, too. Yeah. Like, where are they keeping it? Those jeans are pretty damn tight. But how it's, are they keeping that but in it's, there? It's more fair that everyone carries a gun, so it's nice. What about Wesley? Like, we gotta have... Like, not Wesley. It doesn't have to be him. Not the character of Wesley, but like a you Wesley. A, you gotta have a villain. Ah, Wesley. Yeah, you have to have a major villain. Who would so it be? Who for, do you have? for rich guy ruining the town, I have Woody Harrelson. That's good because yeah. it, it reminds me of uh, Out of the Furnace. Yeah, because it could be a Tennessee. It's Memphis. Yeah. We're, we're talking about Memphis here. Right. Harrelson sounds like he's from Tennessee. It's like, I think he might even be from Tennessee. Well, he played the like inbred guy from uh, yeah. Out of the Furnace where he's like the Jersey whatever, yeah. which I don't know yeah. any place in New Jersey that's like that to you. I mean, we make jokes about Jersey, but uh-huh. I don't know any place in New Jersey no. that's yeah, like Yeah, there must that. be some part of Jersey I don't know of. But I can remember, <laughs> I can remember Harrelson's role in... Um, in uh, the Oliver Stone film, what is it? Um, Natural Born Killers. Yeah, Natural Born Killers. I think he's from Knoxville, Tennessee. It's like it's, it fits. It's perfect. What about like Billy Bob? Billy we, Bob's another we one. We used him last yeah. time or he's, one of the other times. Yeah, well, he's perfect for that as well. 
Travolta. Yeah, if you want to go older, you go Travolta. If you want to go bigger face, yeah. you go fatter Travolta. Face, fatter face, wider you go face. <laughs> bigger, fatter, right. wider face, yeah. Travolta. So any one of those will work. Yeah. What about the love interest? And uh, we're talking about love interest of McConaughey. Yeah, okay. Because so he's the main character. So this is a tough one, because if you have McConaughey, we got to talk about someone who fits his style, right? Yeah. Someone who's done a movie with him before, and maybe this works. I feel like she could be a little country. She could be Tennessean. Uh, Kate Hudson. He tells us they've been in a rom com yeah. together. Was it ten, ten so, or not ten things I hate about you? How to lose a guy? How to, something like that. Yeah. yeah. How to lose so, a guy in ten days. So yeah. So they already have some chemistry. You um, said the perfect one though. Amy Adams. I really like that. Yeah. I think that is the perfect fit. Well, red, the perfect redhead, fit. redhead flair. Yeah. Well, she seems a little country too. Like yeah. she, what well, she was in um, what's it called? Talladega Nights. Yeah, she and, was, and she was pretty. I keep good, forgetting right? that's her. Yeah, yeah. I always mix her up with uh, the girl from The Office. Yeah. Damn. Yeah. But it's not. It's yeah, Beasley. I think she's pretty good. I think she could do a great job. No, oh, that's that's a good fit there. And of course, um, all the henchmen and all the all the other bouncers, we should just make them wrestlers, right? Oh, yeah, I mean, so if, <laughs> that that works well. I mean, it happened in House of a Thousand Corpses. It was yeah. like DDP in there. They could put him in this. Yeah. So we got DDP. Got Undertaker. Stone Cold Steve Austin has to be one. Right? What about Big Show? The Big Show. He's too big. He's too big. Like, like no he'd be unbeatable. Him? You can't. Not even Dalton could beat up. Well, actually, he'd just kick him in the knee. You just kick him in the knee. Yeah, kick him in the knee. It doesn't matter how big he is, right? <laughs> yeah. You could have Big Show, but what about like? So we talk about Jimmy in, earlier in the movie, but someone's got to get their throat ripped, right? Because yeah. something happened yeah. in Tennessee where someone allegedly got yeah. their throat. A throat ripped. had been ripped by Dalton. Who's so. the throat rippy? The throat rippy. I don't know. We were talking about maybe maybe see a punk. Yeah, because he, he he just left wrestling, so he's like he's looking for something he's looking for a job. So he's doing UFC, but he, I'm sure he wants to be an actor. I say Luke Evans. I like Luke Evans. See, I don't I didn't know who that was. You told me about him earlier. He's, he's been the, in so much stuff that you don't realize. He was the Dracula, right? He's the guy in that new Dracula yeah. movie that's coming out. So he's Fast uh, Six. Yeah. So Shaw. He's, got, he's got to be skinny, but also in shape, kind of yeah. like Swayze. And he's got to be young, and maybe a relative unknown is the way to go here. Because he's got to rock a mullet too. Yeah. Because the guy who gets his throat... You don't want to be famous and have your throat ripped. <laughs> you, you're not going to have Stone Cold Steve Austin be the main bad guy. He's not going to sign on to this movie ripped. getting yeah. his throat ripped. It's not going to go down like that. That's like Cruz. Like Cruz isn't going to sign yeah. on to a movie that he dies. So yeah, you have to get it up and cover like that. Maybe so we I like it. The other thing about McConaughey is that he really could rock a mullet. He sort of has one. All yeah. they have to do is comb his hair You don't, you don't need a wig. That's key. You don't that, need a wig. We need to pick people that know they can have a mullet. And I, yeah. A Gosling could do it too. He could pull it off. Oh yeah. It was great. Cooper kind of has a mullet. See, we're talking about modern day mullet. Cooper had the modern day mullet. It yeah. came back, the hair all the yes. way to the back. You know, when when we were kids, young, you got to shave your head in the back. Otherwise, you look like an old man rocking a mullet. Maybe that's how we pick this thing. You just go by hairstyle. Yeah. So you grow. That's how you do the audition. You just set a headshot of your real hair. I like the idea of these guys. I, I think this is a good list. McConaughey, McConaughey or bust. They're not yeah. making this movie without yeah. him. He's got a side on first or you can't make the movie. Yeah. So this feels like a good transition to get into Wesley, yeah. the, the the main bad guy who is sort of convincing, but not, not that convincing. Not really. He's just a rich guy who's playing because he's got a bunch of money, so he can do whatever he wants. He kind of like, he's like a god in this town. So he did you take him as, as an actual tough guy? Did you believe him? No, but that's he's not supposed to play that role. His role is to be, I have so much money, I think I'm invincible. Like I own, he owns the cops. Yeah. He takes skims like a mobster would off of every off of every business in town he brought the mall to the town he brought the 7-eleven as yeah, he says well, i didn't see a 7-eleven anywhere in that no, town but he says he brought that it place was like one street it one may street or may not light. exist it was the smallest town Which, ever. by the way segue real quick how busy can the double deuce get the town's very small like how much more pack could it possibly when they be? went the to red's thing. house like red's house looked like it was 50 miles away yeah like i didn't see a single tree in that so, town and then his house yeah. is like in the suburbs so what so if this, if this is a one stoplight town, who's coming to the Double Deuce anyway? It looks maybe it's like a truck trucker joint, maybe. like you know, it's a truck stop o- off the highway or something. I you're right though, that town is pretty small. I didn't see a lot of people in that town. But anyway, on with Brad Wesley, made baddie. Where do you fit him in in the villain scale? Because well, we did that in another episode. Uh, like I guess we said one was a Vigo, even yeah. though maybe after our last episode we might change that a little <laughs> bit. But one being the weakest of yeah, all villains, one being weak and ten being the Terminator. Ten being Terminator. Where one. are you putting Wesley? He's got to be, he's got to be a one or a 1.5. Yeah. Just maybe because of the 0.5 because of his money and he has a huge. He could just buy things. Yes, he's buy things. He has, he has a monster truck for shit's sake. He, <laughs> I mean, that's got to give him a half point. But that's the thing. He's so rich that he has a bunch of henchmen, including this guy, Jimmy, who can kick everyone's ass in the world except for Dalton. Jimmy, we'll get to Jimmy in a second. I want to talk a little bit more about 
Wesley yeah. himself and some of these crappy henchmen. Right. But that's why that's why Jimmy that's, that's why Wesley works as a villain because he has the money to buy things. He has so did he hunt those animals himself? Yes. The animals in his exotic room. The way he threw that spear at Patrick Swayze. <laughs> He's a spear. A hunter. rookie doesn't do that. It looked like it was on yeah. such a wire yeah. track. Yeah. Dude, and how about the line that he said something about like uh I have it written down here. Let me find it. It says something like, um, the only thing my trophy room is missing is your ass. Your ass. <laughs> He's like the type of guy that, like a rich guy, would he actually mount? I bet he would mount his ass. Oh, he would mount a human's ass. He would mount yeah. a human's ass on yeah. a wall because he's so rich that he can pay for someone to do it. So we'll preface this. So Wesley ends up um, wanting to take down Dalton yeah. because he's, he's starting up trouble. Challenge. Start up trouble. Um, he's getting the town to rally against him. And also because he's dating his former flame, the doctor. Who left town and now yeah. she's back. But yeah, th- there's a lot of crap that happens. I mean, he's extorting the people in the town because he created some betterment fund for the town. Yeah. And people were like upset about it because they were saying it was basically extortion. So he's extorting people. Let's let's get back to the most important part about Wesley and his crew is that, that monster truck. Can we talk yeah. about the monster truck for a minute again? <laughs> so Where do you get that? First Where do all, you yeah. buy that? Where do you buy a monster truck at? Like... Do you just buy, do you go to one of the shows and say, hey, I'll give you $100,000. He went that. there with a blank check. Yeah. He went to go see Gravedigger yeah. with a blank check. Now, when we say monster truck, I'm afraid if you haven't seen this movie, you're misunderstanding us. It's not just a really big truck. It's a like Bigfoot. Yeah. It, the tires are five feet it's tall. Not the, it's not the one yeah. you're going to see that guy that's driving down the street on the yeah. highway yeah. with like big tires. And you say, oh, that's ridiculous. Those tires are big. No, like, oh, who needs a truck that big? They are five foot tall tires. Yeah. This... <laughs> How does he even get into that? There's no ladder. <laughs> There's a seed where he goes through a car dealership and just wrecks cars. He needs a jetpack yeah. to get to get in there. So, like, do you go grocery shopping with that thing? I, like, <laughs> no. The best part of the movie was when they were spying on Dalton, and yeah. they're like trying to spy on him at the place. Yeah. And they have this monster truck <laughs> parked in the parking lot. It's like in the background. It's parked in the background. <laughs> like you know when you see a cop who's like tailing somebody. Yeah. A cop's tailing someone, and they're just kind of chilling in the car, and they're like hiding the seats pulled back a little bit you know they're like hiding with the little binoculars these dudes are doing that but they're in a truck that's like 15 feet tall yeah. i don't know how the hell they think they're concealed yeah. that leads me to the oafiness and idiocy of these henchmen the wor- this guy has all the money in the world but he can't buy anybody worth a damn yeah all these henchmen suck they all except suck. for jimmy yeah all of them suck you got the fat guy the two oafy guys terry funk sucks himself well, they're He's all they're bad. all you say oafy you describe they're all oafy they all have like baldness going on. They're all like balding. I don't know. They, I mean, they're spying on a guy in a monster truck. That tells you all that you need to know. So anyway, the key to this movie, though, is the final fight. The lead yeah. up to this final well, fight. Well, you say final, the Jimmy fight, right? Yeah, the Jimmy fight. Yeah. Not, the, not the other fight. Not the, the old fight, guy fight. No. Not Wesley. The Jimmy <laughs> the fight. The old guy fight. Yeah. The Jimmy fight was, it was kind of building, yeah. right? Because Jimmy shows up. I mean, where the hell was he during the beginning of this movie? Well, he was obviously he was he's all retainer from he's Wesley. An, they don't town. say that. I'm just thinking that. And so once once Wesley feel, realizes that Dalton's in town and he's he's a tough ass and he can't beat him with his normal goofs, his yeah. normal goons, he's got he's got to call up Jimmy and say, "Hey, listen, I need you, buddy. You're my <laughs> main man. You got to kick this guy's ass for me." Jimmy Jimmy is like the anti cooler. He's like the yeah. heater. He's the heater. He's the heater, <laughs> if you will. You call him the, the heater. heater. Yeah. Because you got the cooler, and then you got to get this guy to neutralize the cooler, who's the heater. It's like he was ready to leave town because Sam Elliott was convincing Dalton that, hey, man, this is not worth it. Like, this guy's going to actually do some really bad stuff here. We got to get out of here. Yeah. And he don't want to go because he was like thinking about the woman. But then Jimmy gets involved. Yeah. And it gets personal. What right. happens? He, what does he do? Well, first of all, he beats everyone, every one of Dalton's bouncers up, which is kind of messed up because Dalton, Dalton let it happen because Dalton did a head nod and basically told his bouncers to go get him. What well, Dalton knew full well that they were going to get their asses kicked by this Jimmy dude. I mean, he's got the cross in his ear. He's got the crazy good mullet. He's got the tight jeans. He's got the vest with no shirt. He's got it all. <laughs> yeah, the bolo tie. Yeah. No, he did a shark tooth necklace. Too. Shark tooth necklace. Yeah. So Jimmy beats everybody's ass in this movie, except for Dalton and Wade. So, so we get to the final scene, one of the final scenes where Jimmy throws a fireball or something. It was like something at yeah, a street fighter. At, a, at Dalton's landlord's house, almost burns him to death. And then he drives off and he's like doing this villain laugh that I can't even emulate. It's so on good. A on, a, on a motorcycle. On a motorcycle. It's like a dirt bike. So... <laughs> 
So Dalton hears this. He sees the fireball from his loft. He jumps off the roof in one fell swoop. He did some parkour yeah, stuff. Some parkour stuff. Ran about a mile and just tackled the guy in, while, sweat, in, yeah, sweatpants. in sweatpants. Tackled the guy <laughs> off of his motorcycle, and then what ensued was the best, the, one of the best um, showdowns in the history of, of movies. I, I'll never forget the first time we, uh, like we were talking about, the first yeah. time I watched that. I had no idea what was coming. I actually like. I guess I wasn't paying attention in the beginning when they said that there was a guy that got his throat ripped out. Like they totally telegraphed the move that yeah. was coming. Yeah, I didn't. I didn't expect it. And then when he put his hand up, he held it there for a while. Yeah. And the doctor was making him feel guilty about what he was doing. Right. Even though he, I, I actually agree with him. I think he was doing yeah. the right thing. The guy she almost no shot idea. him in the head. Yeah. He was, was self defense. But really, there, there is no self defense of throat ripping. Yeah. You could have knocked him out. I, I mean, he could have punched him. Could have choke hold him. He could have punched him in the dick. Yeah. I mean, I know that's usually a no go, but better than throat ripping. Yeah. But for the sake of this movie, could have thrown him in the water so right. he couldn't kick back. Yeah, like so we his said jeans earlier. would have tightened up. Exactly, <laughs> his jeans yeah. would have been tight. Yeah, you know, I mean, he could have stabbed him with the shark tooth necklace. He didn't even do that. Yeah. So, um, to, but he throw he rips his throat out. Yeah. I mean, you'll have to you'll have to go watch the fight on YouTube to really to really get a full gist of how good this fight is. It's a back and forth. It's, yeah. it's an epic. We can post it on. We'll post it on Twitter. Yeah. There there is actually the clip of it. It's one of the best yeah. fights ever. Um, is that is that throat floating around in that lake there? Yeah, and at the end of the movie, when it's all said and done, when um when uh, Dalton and Doc they go like skinny dipping they're, in, in yeah, the water, skinny dipping. So they're probably gonna step on that throat, aren't they, on the bottom of the lake? It's not algae. Yeah, it's the throat. It's like, Jimmy's you, you throat. know when you when you're in like a when you're in like a live body of water and you go ew because you're, like it's seaweed. Yeah, it's gonna they're gonna step on the throat. It's Jimmy's it's disgusting. Throat. It's floating. It's, I would it's I would swim in that river. I think that uh, Jimmy as the anti-Dalton is hands down my favorite character in this yeah. movie. Again, just like Wade, he's not in it enough. Yeah, that's a good opposite. They were a good match. The the final fight, um, you know, we don't have to spend a lot of time on it because it's basically him going into this town. He's going into uh, the mansion, just tearing shit up. Yeah. He goes in, he's just killing everybody. It's it's a bloodbath. Let's be real. It's a bloodbath. It's, it's a total bloodbath. I don't know if, if it's absolutely necessary but the henchmen, I felt like most henchmen would just run away. Yeah. If Dalton's coming for you, just get out of there. I didn't like it. I, I did not like this ending. I thought that it was a little, like, I'm not, I'm not, I'm no, I like violence in movies, don't get me wrong, but I felt like it was just unnecessary to kill everyone. And then yeah. the, the way that Wesley went down at the end with all the store owners shooting him with a shotgun. That was kind of stupid. A little gratuitous. That I, felt like the end of a USA movie, yeah. didn't it? Yeah. It like was a too, lifetime. The movie was full of cheese, but that was too cheesy. It didn't seem believable either. And I know we're talking about believability in a movie where a guy just got his throat ripped out. Yeah. But it didn't seem like the type of thing that would happen. Right. And Dalton was going to let him live because the doc showed up and she made him, again, she made him feel guilty about yep. doing what he did, yeah. which was necessary. But she made him feel guilty and he looks like he's going to hold off. And old man picks up the gun, is ready to shoot him. And then those guys bust in. Yep. I, I didn't really like that ending either. I felt like it kind of felt anticlimactic. It's, in a way it did like oh this is our town and don't you forget it it just did i feel like it did not fit like who, yeah. but who was the main guy that shot him did you notice they put a big big camera zoom on him was it the owner the owner of the double deuce take they it all over. shot him but he had an extra smirk on his face like he's yep. yo i'm the next he's wesley. gonna take over once he's, Dalton leaves it's his town he's the next wesley man yeah. i'm telling you he that's like where you know in star wars where you got the sith kills the master it's like the same thing he yeah. was learning from Wesley about being a rich guy. He's going to go in there and take over this town. <laughs> so, I don't know. And and the thing is, too, the police was a major crime scene. Yeah. What did the cops show up? And I know the cops were on the guy's payroll, but the money's not coming in, so they're not going to be convinced to work for him anymore. But right. what did they say? I didn't see anything. Yeah, everybody's like, I didn't see anything. And it's like, it's a fresh body right there. With gunshots. Yeah, it's like, somebody did something. Let me tell you something, okay? The excuse, I didn't see anything, is not going to hold up in court. No, not at all. So I, I, but I still love this movie. I just didn't like the ending as much. Yeah, that's 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 fine. But that's okay because the rest was amazing. Yeah, and I feel like it doesn't deserve it's, a forty percent. You, you can't blame. You can't. The, a movie. A movie can be ruined by an ending, but in this case, it's impossible because the movie's all fun, all fun and games. We were talking earlier about some ridiculous lines in this movie, so I put together a little trivia game for you. I'm, I'm excited. I have so, no idea. I have no prior knowledge of any of this, by yeah, the way. So. I made up some fake lines to go along with some real lines and see if you can decipher the ridiculousness <laughs> that I made up versus the ridiculousness that the writers made up and right. used in this movie. I'm excited. So Hopefully we're going to go through mess. these really quick. Hopefully I don't mess this up. So, um, for example, Jimmy is fighting with Dalton. He says, I used to F guys like you in prison. 
Yeah, that's in the that's movie. real. That's that a real happened. line. So that's, that's yeah. what it's going to be. Okay. All right. So number one, uh, the landlord Emmett says, "Calling me sir is like putting an elevator in an outhouse. It don't belong." True or false? That's true. That's in the movie. I that actually that happened. Yes, I never that's, heard that saying before in my life. That's like something that guy would say, though. Yeah. Number two, Dalton says to one of uh, one of the unruly customers of the Double Deuce, "You're too stupid to have a good time." True I, or false? I think. I'm gonna go true. I think that's in the movie. It's true. Okay, it's true. But like, that's, a, that's such a lame. That's, a, that's such a lame response. It's 1989. Yeah, <laughs> like that's so cheesy. Like it, that doesn't even make sense to me. You're too stupid to have a good time. It doesn't make sense. <laughs> you stupid people yeah. have a great time. Number three, Wade Garrett when talking to um, this is Dalton about some women, he goes, "Beds are for sex, not for sleep." True or false? <laughs> It sounds like something he would say, but I, I don't think that's a, I'm going to say false. But you know, I don't this know. movie too well. That's false. I made that up. <laughs> something he would say, right? Can that, I write? The, can that, I write this movie? That's what he would say. Can I write the reboot? That's what he would say. All right. Number four. Um, he fires one of his bouncers. The bouncer goes, what am I supposed to do now? And Dalton goes, well, I don't know. There's always barber college. True or false? <laughs> I don't know. Uh, it's probably, it's probably false. It's true. That's what he said. I don't like, remember that. doesn't that. even make sense. There's always barber college. It's true. Yeah, I'm that's shaking the, my head that's about the that dumbest one. line of the movie. There's always barber college. It doesn't make sense. One. I don't agree with that one. So that's a true story. Number five, a bar guy says to a young lady, "What do you say we get nipple to nipple?" <laughs> true or false? Is that a is that a real thing? Did that really happen? I don't know if it actually happened, but it sounds like something that one of those extra guys would say. It's is true. It true? Is he true? did say it to a lady, and you know what her response was? Well, I could do that on my own because she had big boobs. <laughs> <laughs> that's perfect. Number six. Wesley says, I brought the ball here. Christ, Walmart's coming here because of me. You ask anybody, they'll tell you. I know he brought a 7-Eleven. Did Walmart exist at the time? I, I'm going to say true. I don't know. It sounds like he It's false. J.C. Petty. J.C. Petty. <laughs> I forgot that he By said the that. Way, when, when, uh, when, uh, I guess he, when Wesley died, yeah. is that J.C. Petty deal, is that still intact? Oh, man, that owner of the Double Deuce, The man. owner of the Double Deuce, does he's he got swoop the, in and get all the profits of that? He's a co-signer on yep. that loan. That's, That's what a, he is. This, this is just the perfect setup to get he rid of Wesley. He has such a creepy look. The owner wanted to get rid of Wesley, clearly, and Dalton was the guy to get That's rid of That's why he brought in Dalton. Yeah. Dude, you, There's you, a whole sinister thing to this. That's exactly why. Number seven, Dalton says, your ass kicking ain't worth the scuff on my boots to a random patron. Oh, God, that's... Probably false, but I don't know. It's false. I it made sounds like something that would be in it. Good call. Thank you. <laughs> Number eight, Wade Garrett says, that gal's got entirely too many braids to have an ass like that. That's true. True. Gotta be, right? That's it a true is. story. Because he said that That's in, the, in the, like, the, they were dancing in, in the, the diner. The diner. Yeah. Okay. Um, uh, random patron says about Dalton, I heard you had balls big enough to come in a dump truck. <laughs> That's true, right? <laughs> That's a true story. It's gotta be. <laughs> I, I agree with that, though. I couldn't make a line of that good. I don't know how they fit into those tight jeans, yeah. but I think that that's a true thing because <laughs> he does have some pretty big balls <laughs> doing what he does. Number 10, Wesley says, I see I found my trophy room, Dalton. The only thing that's missing is your ass. Well, that's true. We talked we about that. It. So you got that. Yeah. Number 11, Wade Garrett says, a little blood never hurt anyone. Sep, I'm going to make, make you lose a lot. That sounds like something they would say. Right? True. Is that true? It's false. False. I uh, made that up. See, I, I should write this movie. It sounds like that would be in it. Uh, consult me on all the tough guy lines, please. <laughs> Sony or whoever's making this movie. Number 12. Dalton, picked, uh, Dalton says, uh, Wesley picked me. And what he did, he effed up. I'm only good for one thing, Doc. I never lose. That's true. It's true. He said that, right? I just wanted to be clear that we got that in there because I thought that was such a badass line. I wish we could put that in the opening <laughs> clip, but I, we couldn't find it. And lastly, um, as, a, as Doc and... Um, and Dalton are making out before their sex scene. Yeah. So um, they're kind of undoing their pants. And Doc says to... His pants are already undone. Yeah. And, and Doc says to um, to uh, Dalton, I thought you'd be bigger. <laughs> That's false. <laughs> That's false. <laughs> All right, you got me. That she didn't say been, that. That would have been perfect. Why though? didn't she say that? It would have been perfect. <laughs> <laughs> well, because he he he's like, I didn't think you'd be that big. It's probably what he would say. <laughs> <laughs> That's the perfect Why did she that say one. that? Oh my she god! It. They, the Raiders missed the golden opportunity. So that's uh, that's the game, dude. That was perfect. I didn't keep score, but you got more than half right. I, I so feel like I did pretty good. You on win. There. You, you know this movie well. That was a great, great game. Well, I love the you. lines. Perfect way to incorporate the lines into this. Yeah. You know, we we could talk about changing the ending. We probably don't need to do that. We could talk also about creating a sequel. But you told me that they already made a sequel on IMDb, right? It's already on there. Yeah, Roadhouse Two. I think it was direct to DVD. 
edit stars. It sounds some, like it would some be. assholes that nobody cares about. <laughs> <laughs> but I Will hate patents in that man. Yeah. Atlee Jackson from <laughs> Sagan and Sixty. Oh well, maybe maybe it is. Who knows? Yeah, but that's but, it. Um, I I hear I, I read the synopsis of it, and I hated that in a throwaway line they say he has what is it, Dalton's son. Yeah, it was his it was his, his kid, kid, right? And the, in a throwaway line, like, yeah, when Dalton dies in a knife fight, in a bar fight, but that's not even on screen. They just mention it in passing that Dalton just, he's dead. Dalton would never lose. He, he doesn't never lose. lose a fight. Yeah, he doesn't like, lose. This doesn't make any sense. And that right there invalidates the entire movie. I'm surprised that whoever owns the rights to Roadhouse would allow them to make that. I don't know what year it was, but I yeah. saw the cover of it and it looked like the cover of like a softcore adult film. It yeah, didn't look it's like really, a movie. It's like neon lights. It's, I thought it was yeah. an adult film when I saw the cover on IMDb. I'm like, that looks a little bad. So, I don't know. Anyway, I don't think they should have made that. Yeah, but I mean, it's an easy money grab. You know, slap the name on it. Somebody gets paid. So that sounds like a pretty good way to wrap this movie up. I mean, I had a great time watching this movie. Um, yeah. Oh, it, this is... I would. I can't wait to watch it again. It's you know? one of my favorites. I mean, I really enjoyed it. I actually, I bought it because I thought, well, it could cost me four bucks to rent this, or I could pay eight to own it. Yeah, I think I'll just buy it. It's like at one point, it's a shame that I haven't seen it until uh, until a couple of years ago, but now I get to enjoy it new in a new way for that much longer. Yeah, so it's kind of a good thing. So I know we did a, a contest. Um, a little loose ends here. We did a contest uh, over the holiday. Yes, we had a lot of great responses. Um, it was around whether Die Hard was a Christmas movie or not. We've right. been promising you guys that we would reveal the winner of this prize, this mysterious prize that fit the theme of our last movie, Ghostbusters 2. We've selected a winner yes. based on an incredible, incredible response. Yeah. This man this man could not be beaten. It's so response. long. Uh, it's too long to read on this on this podcast, but yeah. it was the perfect length to get every point. We'll post it on our website. Yeah. And, and before, I mean, I guess the, uh, the sky won, but we want to uh, thank everyone else. Cause I know, yeah. I know we got a handful of responses in. We thank you very much for trying. There was a lot of great responses. Yeah. So you guys did a great job. We're going to be doing this again too. We'll, we'll do some more giveaways in the future. So definitely submit again. Um, we want to thank everybody that did submit. Cause we had a lot of great answers. Um, but the winner, we'll just read the last paragraph yeah. of, of, of his, um, uh, his answer here. And, and we'll post the rest on the website. But this comes from JJ, who wrote in on our Facebook page. It says, the last paragraph is, Christmas is much is about much more than presents, stockings, and trees. It is about being with those that you love and celebrating all that is good in this world. If that means killing Alan Rickman and a few scary Aryan dudes while saving a building full of people along the way, then deck the halls. That's beautiful. That's like poetry, yeah, man. That's beautiful. I, I want to say thank you to everybody for submitting. Yeah. And JJ, that Great was... Great job, JJ. Congratulations. That was amazing. I will, uh, I'll tell you what he won. He won an action figure of Vigo. V- yeah, we <laughs> ruler we, of Carpathia. We found that online, and uh, I'm not going to say that Bowie doesn't already own that. Oh, it's uh, it's probably displayed on my shelf. But we have that, and uh, we'll be we'll be sending that out to but JJ. I will, I will get JJ's information, and I will send it straight out to him. So, so thank we'll you again touch. to everybody that submitted. We definitely are going to be doing these again. Um, really appreciate it. If you enjoyed our show, stay tuned for more. Let us know what movies you guys want us to watch. Um, you can find us at lastrowpodcast.com, thelastrowpodcast.com. Send us an email at thelastrowpodcast at gmail.com or at thelastrowpod on Twitter. Look for us on Facebook. We have a Google Plus page. And finally, if you want to, leave us a voicemail, 415-779-5278. That's 415-779-LAST. And if you like what we do, please leave us a five-star review out on iTunes. We really appreciate it. Everybody's given us some great feedback so far, and we're looking forward to doing more of these in the future. I thought you'd be bigger. Yeah. I thought the show would be bigger. I thought no, the show would be bigger. <laughs> We're having a great time. So we'll see you guys next week. All right. See you. See you.